Welcome back to Arcturian Philosophy. One year ago today, my life changed. And if you actually look back to the very first video I made, you will hear the cryptic nature of um, how I sounded back then. Without really rehashing exactly what happened, a nuclear war was intercepted. And uh, I have to say, I love wearing this thing. I made this, if you didn't catch the other video. Um, I've wanted to make headpieces for an entire year. You see in my old videos, I used to wear um, necklaces on my head. I would string up a necklace to my head and tie it to myself with bobby pins or something to make a headdress because I've just felt this utter compulsion to do so. And a apparently Arcturians wear those things. <laughs> and these like kind of like cuff around their neck. Almost like Dracula looking in a way, the way most of us draw it, but it looks like this. So I, I feel very at home. Um, what's even funnier is that when um, someone who could see what I looked like, they told me, you have the same haircut. And um, after I activated, I had this total compulsion to cut my hair in a way so that it would come to a point right here and then go backwards to a, to a point in the back, um, to a high tapered point. Um, and I couldn't get the guy to do it correctly when I tried to explain it. It was a very futuristic kind of looking thing. Um, and I knew it was related, but I didn't, it didn't occur to me that, oh, that's what my hair looks like as an Arcturian. I, it didn't occur to me. Or that I had hair, because I never thought Arcturians had hair. Um, but um, that's what one of my topics is going to be the variations among the Arcturian race because there are so many different variations. But one year ago today, my entire life was changed and I know history was altered. If you look on YouTube um, regarding time travel and timelines, there's a guy who says um, that a nuclear war with Russia starts in 2015. And I thought to myself, well, I think they attempted it in 2014, maybe. Yeah, it's right around the correct year. I mean, right close around that year um, in, one, in one timeline. But um, I, I know absolutely for certain that there will be no <laughs> nuclear war because the way they went about it was just so absolutely hard and fast that, mm, that you, couldn't, um, you couldn't get anything through. The, um, so someone who was um, like harassing me said to me, um, you know, our computers aren't really working with this glare at me like, and you're doing it, and I wasn't sure what I was doing. I knew I was doing something, but I wasn't sure exactly what it was or, or how it worked or, or anything. Um, but this time, this, is, this, isn't for, this isn't a video for people who are just meant to be spreaders of love and light. Some of us actually came here um, as, as a type of military. Military is really the wrong word for it because we don't think of ourselves as a military, but some of us are actually here to actively, to be in active combat. Um, and that's what I found myself in after, you know, helping stop a nuclear war. I thought people would be happy, and then the next day, oh, which, which will be tomorrow, the anniversary of my first assassination attempt is going to be tomorrow. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, I, I thought people would be happy, and no, they tried to mur murder me. Um, so 
back then I did not know how to fight. I, I didn't know anything about the system. I didn't know numerology. I didn't know any anything. I had six months notice of being an Arcturian and two weeks notice of there's a plan to have a nuclear war and my grand dead grandfather trying to tell me it's real it's real you have to do something it's real um, now I actually know what to do uh, which is very fortunate what um, what we do to quote fight is we're actually not fighting um, this has to be genuine and Arcturians do it by nature. It's actually somewhat confusing to them as to how we can't do it. They only understand it um, in a matter of physics that on that dimension duality exists and there are poles and, and you don't have the pervasive unconditional love that we do. They understand it in a way kind of like that, but they don't really understand how can you not feel unconditional love. It doesn't really make sense um, because of the dimensions in which they reside. So what you do to protect yourself and to fight back is to summon up a love for everything, for the cosmos, for the enemy attacking you. Um, think about um, things that could have happened to them that made them the way they are and then the next thing is to focus while you, while you are summoning an unconditional kind of love you focus on a violet flame or violet fire they'll say in some of the channelings um, the violet and I've, I've when, when I've got it channeled I've I've heard violet fire of transmutation so it's as if that helps ascend the attacking entity as if you're trying to awaken the attacking entity um, instead of like kill them or something so that's how to essentially both protect yourself in a preventative kind of way and then also if you are threatened if you are outright attacked somehow. Um, it seems like this has not actually happened to many people that I have managed to talk to who have actually had um, strange, I don't know what it's called, maybe Reiki type things where someone does something mentally which causes a bone to break or an organ to fail, Some, things like that. Um, that was a lot of what I, what I was dealing with. So um, if, something like, if something like that happens to you, the way you respond is you focus your energy at whoever the attacker is, since I can't see them, um, you just think of whoever the attacker is, think attacker or whatever, and um, find if you feel it in your heart a love. It's very hard to describe the, the kind of love that Arcturians experience. It's, it's very hard to describe, um, but it's like a, a love for the entire cosmos. Um, it's, it's just, it's difficult to explain, but the best you can manage um, a, a, a love, and sometimes you will feel a feeling in your chest as well, 
um, associated with it and then direct that mentally think of okay my attacker and direct that at them then visualize a big violet colored fire that is engulfing them and sending them into the light. Um, one of two things will happen. One, they'll run away. Or two, they will actually stop, drop their jaw, and say, hey, I want to be on your side. Um, and that has happened with one reptilian that I know of, even though I didn't know about any of this stuff back then. I just, I don't, I, I don't know. Somehow, she, how somehow she figured out that she was on the wrong side and decided to switch sides. Um, funny note, I am talking about Josie, the, rep, the reptilian from the FBI. That's who I'm talking about. Um, yesterday, there was some interesting energy going on. And I have the ability to project music throughout communication lines. Um, and it apparently jams computers or um, puts someone in a trance or uh, dist distraction somehow or makes people start dancing. I, I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I know that uh, I, I know that it does something significant enough um, that I got very targeted for having that ability and um, actually in the psych ward in Sedona Behavioral Health one guy uh, kind of covertly told me oh I have the same thing he, he, was, he was doing it in the psych ward when he got in um, and I realized oh wait I realized I could hear music um, and then he just sort of, well, he wasn't saying anything, just sitting there and I realized I could hear music and I felt compelled to sit next to this person. And he just looked off into space and said, oh, I have it too. <laughs> and I realized, oh, you mean you're the first person I've met who can do the music thing? Oh, cool, okay. Um, so uh, yesterday, this is the first time my phone has actually gotten hacked into a new the new phone, um, and I thought it was malevolent at first, m m uh, malevolent at first, but it wasn't. Um, it it was juicy, and um, uh, see on my I got this on camera on my old videos. I know they're really long, the old ones, but you can actually find it if you go through them on camera. I got. The uh, technology on my Samsung Galaxy S4, um, which has a blinking blue eye on it, and that is controlled by a reptilian usually. It will go from between blue to um, a green eye with eyelashes, um, and would blink on there. And it could it can tell when you're looking at the screen too, like it it could tell. And it would seem to be able to read your mind. It would point arrows at things to click on to attempt to tell you what to do and stuff, like mind control you. Um, and none of that's gotten onto the phone that I have now. But in the middle of um, playing a song, I was sp specifically playing a song that was related to um, reptilians. Um, by uh, Owl City, it was called Al It's called Alligator Sky. Um, you wouldn't know that it was about reptilians unless you had, you know, were kind of exposed to it and understood. Oh, alligator sky and rocket ships and stuff like that. That's what that meant. And it's got rap in it, and they like rap, and <laughs> and so, so it was, you know, definitely their kind of thing. Um, but he makes it, and he turns it into a very beautiful representation of reptilians instead of kind of the nasty ones that we're used to dealing with. Um, so I was playing that, and in the middle of playing that, it's, my phone suddenly switched to a different song by a completely unknown band. 
um, like the band had had like the the um, video had only a million views and um, two thousand subscribers. And it was called uh, the band was called Houndmouth. And see, as soon as I saw ha Houndmouth, I reacted like on instinct, like how I used to react, which was immediately delete it. But then I thought, well, you know, I'll go back and look and see if I can find whatever the song was. So I typed in Houndmouth, and the first thing that popped up was Sedona, and I realized, oh, I remember that was the title of the song. So I, pl I played the song, and I realized that it was, a, it was a joke, that it was from Josie to say, hi, I'm alive, and I'm here, hello, <laughs> uh, long, long time no see. Um, so, um, we may have, um, there's been a lot of talk about September 23rd. Um, now I know from other sources that, um, September 21st is actually a big, uh, big day, um, for something. Who knows what? Not sure. Um, I've heard um, different things about concepts of portals being opened or um, like some people have said of, uh, you know, objects hitting the earth or whatnot. Um, rest assured that most likely nothing will actually happen except possibly to those of us that stop whatever is afoot. Um, uh, I know the other day it seemed like I was being um, threatened by somebody wearing black in the middle of the night, like, like the way that I used to get watched in my apartment complex. I was walking around at night playing music um, to myself, you know, no, not like loud music or anything in headphones and I noticed wait you know there are a lot of people there are people walking around that don't usually walk around this time of night what is going on here and um it uh it just there were things that were Su suggestive of hey we're watching you and n we're gonna do stuff to you if you uh, n do something and stop something again and mm. and um, but but see but what I what I discovered was that um, they could not continue doing anything to me um, as long as I held this love for them, um, and a, and also a huge like cylinder-shaped UFO flew right over me. Um, I'd never seen one that looked like that before. The huge cylinder-shaped one, like a submarine, actually, like like it looked kind of like a flying submarine. Um, and I, I was like, whoa, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the dark can uh, attempt to, you know, make punches at you, um, but they can't keep doing it if you react in um, a frequency that is unconditional love and then follow the violet fire um, visualization. Um, this, is, th this is very easy, but the hardest part is actually um, maintaining the um, unconditional love. That's what really does it. That's what, that, that's what does the trick. Even if you don't think of a violet fire, that the unconditional love is what does the trick. And like, like um, me saying words right now like hard or trick or change, 
Um, those are those those are words where when they're said um, uh, allow like programming openings for something alchemically to be done to you like your stuff cursed or your water or your food or or like some weird reiki to break your bones or something um but if you are maintaining a vibration that is of a complete um i would describe it as a love for all things for for the cosmos um to attempt to summon it up myself i think of um i try to think of me as the one with black eyes and who is like obsessed with this haircut and wearing these headpieces and like dress dressing like this i think of that me and then i think of how that me thinks of the cosmos and and then i can I can do it. Um, our Arcturians seem to um, actually be in wonderment of the mystery that is the multiverse um, and experience uh, an unconditional kind of love for for it and for maintaining it. What's funny is that um, kind of like how the United States acts like the global police and global humanitarians, it seems like that's like how the Arcturians are to the galaxy, at least this one. Um, and do, I'd say do whatever, um, whatever helps you summon up that kind of love. You can think of your child maybe that that might be what would do it for you. Um, just anything that will cause you to experience a feeling of, of love. And for me, what works the best is, is thinking of me, the alien, and as if I'm looking out of a ship at the stars in awe at them. It's as, it, it's as if that's, that's how she thinks, um, partly. And then that's what, that's what seems to stop attacks. It's, it's almost like Arcturians are winning just, just through physics here. The dark can't exist in that love vibration and when when it gets to the vibratory level or frequency level the definition of love doesn't matter because you're not using words you're using a frequency because see love to reptilians means like inflicting pain and um like, like that's helping you somehow by inflicting pain on you um, and they think of sex as love too um, it occurred to me the other day that oh wait you mean you know I think one of the reasons they might think that way is because when we actually project unconditional love they experience pain so that, I don't know but it seems like they do so that would make sense why they may have gotten the definition of love confused. They, they, they have a totally warped definition of what love is. They think it's, they think it's like causing someone pain and, they, and, and will say they'll hurt you and then say I, lo and say, I love you like, like that's loving you somehow. And uh, they, they don't know what, what actual love is. So we're we're winning in a sense by the laws of the universe by projecting a frequency that they cannot exist inside of it's like gravity it's it's like um you know holding up 
the apple with Newton, and when you drop the apple, it falls from the tree. Um, when you project the frequency of love, the dissonant frequency has to leave or match. So that is how we uh, go about the next uh, upcoming month because I, I think the energy is all ramped up because we're getting prepared for September, whatever is, is uh, going on. Uh, I know a lot of star seeds seem to be experiencing communications um, or possibly in their, their first phases of activation if they hadn't activated already. Um, I do know that, that lots of star seeds are going to be activating and eventually I won't seem so weird. I know that I'm not so weird because the Arcturians are the ones that really like put themselves out there on the internet. Um, we, we, we seem to be loud and screaming from the rooftops. Um, I, I, I don't notice other star seeds types doing that so much, but um, but the concept of star seed in, in general won't be so um, so strange. Um, I believe that concludes my talk. Remember, love and the violet fire of transmutation. That's what you do. Um, there's also light, but you see the other side uses light to operate. So that's why going off of a frequency-based method um, of the frequency of love, um, that frequency does not allow attacks to continue and causes the entire space, the manifestational stage, to change. So uh, we'll see what happens in the next uh, month or so. I'm kind of interested to see what goes on and we're going to see more from me with these really cool headpieces. I hope somebody eventually wants to buy them because I think they're really awesome and uh, not many people have thought to make um, extraterrestrial headpieces. So, blessings to you all on Arcturian philosophy.